How's it going, folks? I'm the Canadian Computer Collector, your favorite Canadian computer collector. I just had dinner, so I'm a little bit bloaty right now. And I figured, in keeping with the theme of bloat, why don't we work on a G4 eMac? Arguably one of the heaviest machines that uh, Apple's come out with, but this one almost broke my back. I got this thing for like 20 bucks off of a local buy sell. Uh, really strong German man who was also a garbage man. And that's probably where his strength was derived. Tells me the machine works, says, do you want to see it? I say, I trust you. Picks it up like it's nothing and then hands it to me. And I hadn't owned one of these before. So I had no idea at the time. This is like two years ago and I was just getting into collecting these things. I put my arms out like this. He drops it into my arms. Instantly, I hear my back go <laughs> And I'm trying not to show weakness in front of this really strong German garbage man. And even though it came with a back injury, I'm glad I bought it for one reason. Because it has a plastic stand. That's right, most of the videos that I've seen with these machines, no stand. And this thing swivels, baby. <coughs> so what's the plan for today's video? Well, we're gonna take it apart, clean it up, and then ideally, by the time this airs, I'll have purchased plastic polish and we're gonna give it a bit of a polish. Uh, who cares? So in the spirit of getting things started, instead of dilly-dallying, let's just jump right into it. Also, quick reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe. <coughs> well, here we go, folks. I got a tenderloin slow cooking right now. My feet are washed. Uh, it's time for a voiceover. So with your washed feet, Go ahead and start pulling that plastic stand off, as we've already done. A couple torque screws to get the case shell to come loose. Watch out for this power cord, though. You don't want to rip the shell off and, and break the power button or the cable itself. Uh, so just gently disconnect them, remove the top, and you can move on to the fan. You can also leave the fan on the fan chassis assembly, but I removed the fan separately. A couple zip ties, a couple screws. Um, now keep in mind, this is a high voltage area. It's not the only one on here. There's one on the back, which is located right here. You don't want to stick anything metal or conductive or your finger in either of these. Don't slip anything under that rubber seal either. Maybe it's just asking to die. So continuing our journey to the center of the EMAC, we remove the back plate near the motherboard, CD, and hard drive. We pull off the fan chassis, which also has a zip tie on there. Uh, disconnect the cable from the CRT to the motherboard. Pop these four little fellas off, just hanging out front of Satrialis, like the Soprano crew. We get a first look at the Mobo. Now, this was the end of the first night, and I didn't want my cats to shock themselves to death, so I put that cover back on top. Too late to vacuum, but as you can see, the next morning, we didn't waste any time. Vacuuming literally everything, I went over this machine top to bottom. Sucked all the dust off, washed all the pieces where possible. Obviously, I'm not going to wash the motherboard with Lysol spray. And one of my cats just puked on the floor. I have now cleaned it up, though, so we're back at it. Uh, onto the fan. Fan's very dusty. There was dust on both sides of it. Sucked it all into the vacuum and then took a little isopropyl alcohol to the blades and the frame itself just to kind of really make it sparkle, even though we'll never see it. At least we know there are many years of dust collection in its future. Uh, this little back plate, which the plastic stand screws onto, needed a little bit of cleaning, and actually some of the Lysol spray got stuck underneath, so I had to blow it out with an airbrush. Looking good, feeling good, wearing mice as a necklace. Who's this guy? Is he single? Haha! <laughs> Time to suck some dust off the motherboard. And off of the heat fins. Actually, this whole motherboard assembly is really unusual. You can see here the hard drive is literally mounted at an angle over top of the motherboard. Then you have the heat sink, which pipes all of the heat into the fins at the back. You have an optical drive mounted underneath of it. And the weird thing is, if you take the optical drive out, you don't even mount it flush to the frame again. It's super strange. Anyway. It's time to ISO some thermal paste. And the thermal paste on this machine was rock hard. Like it had basically turned into a plastic product at this point. I'm surprised I was able to clean it off of anything. Um, the bottom of this heat sink had it real bad. It was kind of building little trenches inside everything. We managed to clean that off. The real PS de resistance though is that uh, heat pipe with the fins you should see the thermal paste on that, and you will, so... 
Nice dab of fresh stuff for the GPU. Chuck that clean heatsink back on, am I right? Little dab on the CPU and oh wait, we forgot to clean the heatsink. Look at that. Oddly enough, 99% isopropyl alcohol can convert this plastic back into a liquid that we can wipe off with a paper towel. And you know what? Look how clean it is. That is satisfying. And I wasn't confident with how much thermal paste I put on the CPU after cleaning the heatsink, so it's almost a good thing that I did it in that order. Some people may disagree with how much I put on there, I know that's a, a hot point online. So hard drive caddy goes back in, so does the hard drive. It was fine, it's an 80 gig hard drive. Still works. I mean, I'm not going to be using this thing much, so I'm not putting a solid state in it. But Once all that's together, we can plop it back on the rear of the case. Or the bottom, one might say. Uh, a couple screws go in. Actually, more than a couple. It's like eight or nine that hold the whole thing in place. There's just my favorite four. Plug all the plugs back in. Soprano boys head back to Satriales. Fan chassis goes back in. Oh, wait. Is it time to possibly put the fan back? Oh, no, it's not. It Now it's time to put the fan back in. Huh? <laughs> Professional voiceover. So the screws go back into the rubber grommets as well as the uh, Piece on the chassis that catches them so you get a nice snug fit for that fan. I'd never really seen rubber grommets on uh, On a fan before but looks like that's not the only place they exist. So this thing's gonna go for a soak in the tub I'm not even gonna bother trying to vacuum that crap out. It needs to soak. I am worried about the power button though So I really really needed to let this thing dry. This is where the house fan comes in and we wait, and we wait, and we encourage, and we emulate. All right, time for some plastic polish on some of this clear plastic. Now, this piece had a lot of abuse over the years, so, you know, it came out all right. It didn't come out perfect, um, but there's a really nice angle right here. You can see how clean it finally started to look right after the polish. The bottom plate on the stand, same thing. You know, it, it was pretty dirty, not so bad as that other piece, but this one came out really nice and clean. Hooray for polish. Hooray for the polish. Alright, time to start putting the stand together. These nice little sliding bits. And the top goes back on. Gently guide it back into place. A uh, little ice purple alcohol on some of the stains and dirt. And uh, in go the screws. And once the screws are in, time for a little bit more cleaning. There's always time to clean when you're working on projects with the Canadian, uh, uh... So bottom plate goes on, cat says hi, time to get the stand going. And by going, I mean up and down. Bottom plate goes into the little lug that holds it in place, and got a little bit of polish to put on the exterior. The polish didn't make a huge difference, I'll admit. You can still see a decent amount of the scratches in there. I probably need like a heavier polish in the future, but it did uh, smooth out the surface. And you know what? It looks nice. From a distance, it looks great. Up close, you can still see some of the scratches. There's also some weird like ink or something at the bottom of the CD tray. You can't really see it on the door there, but that's what I'm getting off here. Time for a test boot. So after finishing those arm movements, I went for a quick wipe and then booked an appointment with a physiotherapist. But we're in a place now where we can install an OS. So let's boot the eMac into target disk mode, pull out my favorite iMac bridge machine, do a little bit of a hard drive partition, and a quick restore with a copy of Tiger. After waiting for a bit, obviously it did its thing. Then we could go through the process of okaying the install, say hi to the cat. And we got a bit of a boot screen to get through, some information to fill in, and uh, yeah, we have OS X. I'm gonna call that a success. Hey gang, that's gonna be it for this week's video. I don't really intend on using the G4 eMac very often. It weighs about 50 pounds, and uh, now that I've cleaned it up and restored the OS, I think I'm just gonna keep it around to loan out to uh, movie productions or just kinda keep on the shelf. 
Yabba dabba do. To all the people who are finding this for the first time, we do a new video every Saturday, so please like and subscribe. If this is your kind of thing, if it's not, then, you know, I don't really know what you're doing here in the first place. But if you're just here to support, then that's all right. Yeah, so that's about it. I guess we'll end this video here before too much sweat starts pouring down my face. <laughs> Holy God, it's hot right now. Eh? Eh? All the way around. Because we got the stand. So I just want to give a special shout out to Steve from Mac84, as well as an anonymous donor who supported the channel this week through Buy Me a Coffee. If you're interested in supporting the channel, click on the link below in the description. And, uh. So, Steve, anonymous, I just wanted to say once more from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You're two excellent gentlemen. Steve, I already know the cut of your jib, and let me say I like it. I sent you a million Canadian dollars in the form of a bill, as well as a signed copy of John Grisham's The Street Lawyer. And let me just say, you're doing a great job. Anonymous doesn't matter <laughs> what you are. Thank you so much for your donation. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, and I think you know in the bottom of your heart just how much of a generous person you truly are. I bet you anything, if you walked into a forest in New Zealand, a unicorn would reveal itself to you in a majestic moment where doves fly above in the air, and guys like Bobby Flay appear out of the, <laughs> the tall grass. So both Steve and Anonymous person, thank you. Spread the good word. Remember the gospel of the Canadian Computer Collector. Uh, which is to always be... Thank you very much, and have a good night. Holy shit.